Why hello there and welcome to my channel. I'm Kim from Chaos Gunning Designs and today we are going to make this adorable Hocus Pocus inspired notepad holder. This is the Moon Dance notepad holder from Sincerely Jen and it's such a fun notepad holder. Um, it can be made with vinyl, cork, um, I've even made it with cotton woven. Um, there is a hack for cotton woven. I'm not going to show you that today, but today we're going to make it a little bit spookier. So I took the notepad holder and made a spell book. So all of the appliques and everything, I'm going to show you how to put that together. I'm going to show you how to create this fun tab that is used to close the notepad um, holder. And we'll be able to assemble all of the inside pieces. This is what mine looks like. I did a clear little uh, business card holder here. So all of my supplies are going to be listed in the descriptions of where I found everything so that you can get them yourselves. The only, the only one I'm unsure of is this Hocus Pocus uh, vinyl. I think, so I've been kind of hoarding vinyl for a while. I think it's from K&A Custom Fabrics, but back like years ago um, when they were under a different brand. So I can't be 100% sure, but um, I'm sure if you look around, you can find something that will, will work. Hocus Pocus is such a, a popular print. So anyway, this is what we'll be making. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, make sure you subscribe and like um, my channel and like this video so that you can uh, help me um, in making more and more videos for you. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Okay, so let's talk about all the supplies you're gonna need. We'll go through the pattern pieces in a moment. You're gonna need some clips. I like to use um, these more like I think they're called like hair clips maybe um, but they're metal they don't mark up your vinyl so I'm gonna probably use those that way I don't make any indents in the vinyl double-sided tape I have some eighth inch here I don't know if I'm gonna need anything thicker than that but this is from way whack this is their hyper stick tape um, sewers aid just because I don't change out my presser foot um, I leave the metal presser foot and just so it doesn't get stuck on the vinyl, I use sewer's aid in the path of my stitching. Um, Beacon 3-in-1 glue is also going to be helpful. And then a 22 millimeter plastic eyeball. Um, I got mine from Amazon. It came in a pack of like, I don't know, like 12 or so in different colors. This one's more like a grayish blue color. It's kind of fun. Okay, in addition to that, you're going to need all of your pattern pieces cut out and appliques. So let's go through the pattern pieces themselves. Then we'll go through the appliques. Okay, so according to the pattern, you're gonna cut out one large piece of whatever you wanna use for your outside. This is vinyl from the Crafty Butterfly Supplies, um, and it kind of looks like it's that worn leather skin <laughs> look um, that the spell book was made out of. And you're gonna go ahead and attach your Decaville Heavy um, per the pattern instructions. And then you will need two um, pieces for your interior. One of them has a piece of Decaville Heavy on the back. Again, place this per the pattern's instructions. Um, Jenny walks you through kind of where to place it, where to put some holes. And I also drew a line of where we're going to cut and I'm gonna stitch just below that line. So I just went ahead and just drew that on, my, on for myself. And then you'll need a side pocket piece and then your business card slot. I'm using clear vinyl for my business card slot because this is really print, fun printed vinyl and I just really don't 
want to block Winifred's face <laughs> because I love her. So I thought I would make it clear so that when it's empty, it's visible. And the other thing that you're going to need then are your appliques. So um, I'm going to use this. I'm sorry, this is not an applique. This is just another pattern piece. I lied. So this is for the center piece. So I cut another piece for my center piece. So sorry about that. The rest of it are appliques. All right, so for the applique front part, um, here's what I have. And one of them isn't part of the applique file. I have just an oval, and that oval is going to be what we use for our strap, for our tab. So there are two tabbed pieces. This is for the back of the tab, so it'll go this way. I put some Decaville light on the back, just so that when I put my snap in, um, it doesn't pull through over time. There'll be another one that matches this with the hole cut out. Then there will be this oval piece, and the oval piece is actually going to fit into the middle of this. You're not necessarily going to see this piece. You'll see in a moment what we're going to do. So that'll be our tab. Then you're going to have kind of like this, I guess I, it's a spine, um, and a snake that goes on top of the spine. Um, so I'm using just my punk vinyl from my punk broidery. I don't know if you can tell in this video or not, but this is a darker gray and this is a lighter gray. It's very, very subtle, but it gives it a little bit of dimension um, when it's laid on top. So I thought that would look kind of cool. So basically the way this is going to go is, actually I'm not sure what's going to be my front and my back. Hmm. I'll make this my front. So this is going to go kind of here on the side. The snake goes down on top of it. So I don't know if you can see that well. And then there's some corner pieces. So there's two corner pieces that I did in the dark gray. So those are going to go kind of down here and up here. And then we're going to have some snakes that go on top of it. I went ahead and just started to like draw on top of it with a metallic pen. I get my metallic pens from Mormino. There's one of them. And it can write on vinyl really well and kind of rubs right off when you're done. So I went ahead and just kind of marked where the stitch lines should go where the, um, to show how this is kind of curving around, like the snake is kind of curled around we're just going to use some stitch lines around that those spots. So I just marked that for myself. So one of your snakes is going to go at the bottom here, and then the other snake is going to go at the top. So it's going to form kind of like these really cool corners. It's going to be something like this. And then your tab is going to go around that spot. The only other piece that you're going to need is a scrap of um, two and a half by two and a half inches um, of vinyl. And I cut a slit in it that's about an inch wide. So just on the back, I just drew a straight line in the middle that was a one inch slit. Something to keep in mind with all of your vinyl, something I like to do is I use a lighter or an implement to that can melt things. <laughs> um, and I usually run that around any exposed raw edge of vinyl just to get rid of the fuzzies, but also to kind of seal that edge so that if the cloth um, backing does show it all, it's not going to fray. You could also use fray check to do the same thing. And I do that on all of my vinyl pieces where the raw edges are exposed. I do that instead of edge painting because um, my feeling is edge painting something like this is I just don't think it's necessary um, edge painting the outside of the notepad holder sure um, but these small pieces for applique work no um, I just heat seal those and kind of try to melt what I can so that's pretty much what this is going to look like so we're just going to prepare these pieces 
um, and then we'll move on to sewing. So for right now, we're just gonna, we're gonna be using some glue. That's what the beacon is for. So let me put some of this stuff aside. Okay, so let's take care of our snakes first because those are easy. I like to use beacon glue because when it dries, I can sew on top of it and it doesn't gum up my machine. So I find it super, super helpful. So just put a little bit of glue on the back. Probably had should have had this turned upside down already. It's coming. Okay, so we're gonna just do a tiny, tiny bit. You do not need to put a ton of this. We're really talking small, small amounts here. You don't want it to go over the sides of your applique. I probably even put too much. I think mine's gonna end up leaking, but that's all right. Just enough to kind of hold it in place. You could use tape. It's just that I'm gonna end up sewing probably directly in the middle of a lot of this. Um, you can also use spray adhesive. And I just kind of spread it around a little bit. You may have some excess that's still going to peek through. That's ah, okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. I have some marks on my, on my vinyl here. Just rub those off. Okay. So, Go ahead and take your snake. And remember, it's going to be at a 90 degree angle. So you just kind of want to get that tail right in the corner there. And line it up however you like it. Might wiggle mine around a little bit, which means I'm going to have excess glue in places. That's fine. I'll remove it. I think that looks good. I can see some of the glue peeking through. I'm just going to use my stiletto to kind of remove some of it. So this is kind of your crafty part with all this glue. Okay. So there's one and go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. So I'll put those aside. Okay, so now go ahead and grab your spine. And we're gonna do the same thing with the snake is just go ahead and turn that over. And we're just gonna put a little bit of glue over here. Oh, my glue is going a little crazy. Look at this. This is like this huge bubble. So we have that done. Perfection. We'll set that one aside. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, we're gonna put our backing together. Okay, so, or sorry, our tab together. The tab is a little trickier. So take your two by two piece in your back and your eyeball. I like to, on the back of my piece, on each side of the slit, I put a little bit of tape. About, I don't know, like a sixteenth of an inch down, something like that. We're not going to sew right here, which is why I'm using tape. If we were going to sew that, I would use some glue. So just a little bit of tape on each side of the slit. Okay. There's a reason why I'm using the super sticky tape. I do not want it to go anywhere. I need to decide what is my top and what is my bottom. I think this is going to be my top. Well, I guess it doesn't matter because this is round. All right, so you're going to take this and kind of open up your slit and we're going to kind of position it over the eyeball. 
This is going to be a little tricky doing this on camera because I am seeing this at an angle. So apologies if I need to like redo anything. Um, actually, it's pretty darn good. So we're just going to stretch that over so that it looks like an eye opening. And then press your tape down. So I think that actually looks pretty good. If you need to make an adjust adjustments, now is the time. I think I'm actually really, really good here. Okay, so now we have something that looks like an eye opening with an eyelid, bottom lid and top lid. Now what you're gonna do, we're gonna put some glue on the oval piece. Uh oh. I'm just gonna kind of put it all over. It's a really thin amount, but I'm just trying to spread it with the tip here. Spread it around. And then we're going to take our eye and just position it over this. And just press down the sides where you have the glue, just so it kind of stays. You want it as flat as possible. Just make sure it is lined up correctly. It's about centered. Okay. So what we're gonna end up doing once this dries is we're gonna take our piece, we're gonna cut this oval out. I'm gonna let it dry first. We'll position it over this and then we are going to position our tab and stitch around. So it's gonna look really, really fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and just let this dry. I'm actually gonna put, I think I need a little pressure on it. Just so it, dries the way I want. I'm just going to use a few clips. Okay, so that's how I'm going to leave it. I'm going to let that dry. All right, so we're done with glue for the moment. Um, I believe. <laughs> Until we get to actually um, adhering everything to the front. So that's as much prep work as we can do at the moment until everything dries. So once everything is dried, I will be back. So just in summary, here's what you should have together now. We haven't done anything with our tab yet. Everything else is just kind of set to the side and we'll come back to it all. Okay. Now that everything is dry, it's looking really, really cute. I'm gonna go ahead and cut along the oval. That's what we have. It's really adorable. How fun is that? Okay, so let's go ahead and assemble our tab. I'm gonna put this aside here. Okay, so before we want, we, we do anything, um, we need to attach our snap. So um, I'm going to put the male end of my snap here. I'm going to be using some um, spring snaps. So let me go attach this and I will be right back. 
Okay, so I attached the male part of the tab or the snap just using my rivet press. Okay, so turn this so that it's wrong side up and we're gonna glue this down on top. Actually, I think I might use tape instead. This is half inch. That way you don't need very much. I'm just gonna do it kind of in the middle. Like don't accidentally sew on top of it. And then just center it as best as you can, kind of in the middle of this. Just so it can kind of stay put. Then our next step is going to be that this goes on top. So it's just going to be like a sandwich. So we'll sandwich everything in between. And I think the best thing for us to do with this is to go ahead and glue this down because it's so thin that the, I don't want to gum up my needle when I'm stitching. So again, more glue. I know we're a little glue happy over here. It's okay. not using a ton of glue and then just try to line this up and press you want it as even as you can and I'm going to use clips again Kind of keep everything in place while it dries. Okay, we're just going to set this aside and just let it dry. The other thing I'll go ahead and do while I'm here is I will attach this with some tape too. These, these little longer pieces can get attached with tape. I'm just going to put a piece down the middle. It's just to keep it straight when you sew, rather than using clips. Okay, so we'll let that dry and we'll move on to our other pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna take this piece now. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue down my spine and then my corners. So the way that this gets sewn up is there is going to be a piece on the right, a piece, sorry, a piece on the left, a piece on the right, and then there is a center spine in the middle. And I'm just gonna to try to illustrate this for you because it's gonna matter in the way that we line up the, the um, front spine. Okay, so this is gonna go right around there-ish. Um, make sure it's even. So this is what it's gonna look like on the inside, which is pretty freaking cool. So that's what it's gonna look like. 
So when we stitch all of this together, we're actually gonna be stitching along this edge too, these two edges, which means that there's gonna be a stitch line that's gonna show on the front as well, right around that spot, which is roughly, if we take this out, this should line up with your Decoville. So it's gonna be about an eighth of an inch in this side of your Decoville. That's where there's gonna be a stitch line. From here to about here, about an eighth of an inch in from the Decaville, the edge of the Decaville. So because of that, I, li I, I like to place my spine just outside of that stitch line so it doesn't get caught in the stitch line. So when we're folding this down, you can kind of tell where your Decaville hits. And I wanna say it's about half an inch in. I just measured this too. I thought I was right. Let's look. It is about, no, I think it's less than that. It's roughly, it's just under half an inch. Oh no, it's about half an inch. I was right, I was right. So, so um, anyway, if you place this part about five eighths of an inch away from the side, you should be free and clear of it getting caught in stitches. So if we place it like here, you should be fine. So now you can attach this um, to the front either using double-sided tape or glue. I was mentioning glue, but I feel like I could probably get away with double-sided tape since I have eighth inch here with me. So let's do that instead. Change of plans. I'm just gonna keep it away from the top and bottom by about a quarter of an inch. Oops, things are getting stuck. I'm wondering if I should go back to glue. I changed my mind again. We're doing glue. The only reason I'm gonna do glue is, and the reason why I was thinking about it before, is we still do need to stitch along the edges of the snake. So, I'm just gonna do glue. That was my original, my original plan, and I'm gonna stick to that. I had a good reason for it, and I'm just remembering why. I don't wanna gum up my needle. I think that's a pretty good reason. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my ruler again. Let me just make sure that this is lined up. And this is about five eighths of an inch. Three eighths. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it top and bottom just to make sure it's somewhat aligned in the center. Sure, I think that looks good. Okay, and then we're gonna do something similar with the corner pieces. So when this gets stitched in it, the final stitching, there is stitching about an eighth of an inch all the way around. So I'm gonna keep this about a quarter of an inch in just so that this doesn't get stitched with that final stitch. And once again, we're gonna let it dry and I'll be back with the next step. Okay, I am back, things are dry. We're gonna work on our tab. So I'm gonna use some sewer's aid. Just so my presser foot doesn't stick. And we are going to sew along the outer edge first. spreading this with my finger just so it has an even coat. And we're gonna stitch all the way down and around the outside edge, about an eighth of an inch away 
ish. I might do a little less. I'm going to use a exciting <laughs> four millimeter stitch length. Okay, so this is what it should look like. I know it still looks a little wonky. But now we're going to stitch on the edge of the inside part, sorry, of the circle that's here on the inside, but still along the gray vinyl. I already have a bunch of sewer's aid on here. I wiped some of it off, but I don't think I need extra. I'm just kind of moving this around just so it's flat where I want it to be. Okay, so this is what it should look like. So cute, right? So cute. So what bulges a little bit like an eyelid, which it should. <laughs> It'll be so fun. So this is what it's going to look like. Like that. And that's going to be your tab. Okay. So I like to pull my threads to the back. So just pull these two pieces until loops form from the underside. On those loops to get the thread to come out. My aim obviously is not very good here. There we go. Oh, I messed up. Hold on. Hold, please. That happens to you and you accidentally pull the wrong one. Just take a needle. Just try to go back through the hole that you messed up. Oopsie. All right, now I'm fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually try to thread these through the seam. So I'm going to take a needle and just go through one of the existing holes here and go in between these two vinyl layers. And I'm going to pull some of these threads through there. going to tie these off and hide my tails in the seam itself. So this is what it should look like now. Cute, right? Oh, my vinyl is coming out. Oh man. I will make sure the file, the rounded piece is bigger. It looks like I didn't catch one of the edges. If that happens, there is something you can do. I think I might change to black thread to do this. I will be back. Okay, I'm back. So I have um, some black thread in my upper, for my upper thread and gray for my bobbin. I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch along the brown rounded 
oval just to kind of secure everything. That's better. It actually makes it sit pretty nice too. Okay, I can live with that. Okay, so our tab is now done. That was, that was a journey. Okay. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna mark where you want your tab to fall. I think I want mine right in the center, actually. Um, so I'm gonna try to find where the center is here. Get the ruler on my table. So I'm about here is my center. So I'm going to take some chalk. I, I like to use um, pastel pencils that you can get at the craft store or art supply store. And I, I pretty much use exclusively chalk pencils, uh, pastel pencils like this instead of like regular chalk. And just Put some chalk at the end where your the little bump is, and then figure out where you want to position this. So I'm going to put mine, I think, right around there, because I want a little bit of this sticking out. So maybe like there and press down. And now you have a mark where you need to punch your hole and put your other side of your snap. So I'll be back with that. Okay, so here's your snap, here's your snap tab. How cute is that? So that's what it's gonna look like. <laughs> so cute. Okay, put my snap tab aside. You, you could also edge paint your tab I don't think I need to because the vinyl that I have is gray on the underside and you can't see it at all. So I think it's fine. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start top stitching down my appliques. So we're gonna open this up and I'm gonna do my snake first. I'm gonna go all around the edge of the snake and then also around the rectangle. I'm gonna use a little sewer's aid to help me out so my presser foot does not stick. Helpful hint, I use a thread sapper. It's really for um, jewelry making, but this element heats up and melts the ends um, of your tails to kind of just seal those. I like using it better than a lighter sometimes. It just melts it. No open flame. The last thing I'm gonna do on the snake is I'm gonna make a, a couple of like little eyes just by doing um, single stitching. The 
Okay, so that's those. Now we're gonna move on to this snake. I think I mentioned before that with these, the snake is meant to look like it's coiling around, so it goes on top of itself here, underneath, underneath this coil, and then underneath the whole thing and ends with the tail. So that's why I drew some lines for myself so I know kind of which path to take with my stitching. And again, I'm gonna use Sewer's Aid to help me out. Okay, so that's what the bottom corner looks like. Now you're going to repeat that for the top corner. Okay, so once you're done stitching all the appliques, this is what it should look like. You can see all of this in all its glory. So then on the back side, I went ahead and put my label. And this is what it looks like on the underside. So I stitched through all of my Decoville but I have really thin vinyl, so it was really easy for me to stitch through all the layers and it just helped to kind of keep my Decoville in place. You don't have to do that if you have something that's a little thicker. I wouldn't recommend putting your Decoville on right away. You can just go ahead and wait until after you're done appliquing and then you can add your Decoville. This is the underside of my snap. I use a rivet press to attach mine, so it is pretty flat on that surface so it shouldn't really cause us any problems and we're stitching everything at the final stage. So next you're going to grab your spine. I'm using this vinyl for my spine and I put some double-sided tape on the back. You don't have to use tape, you can just use clips, glue, whatever you would like to kind of keep things in place while you sew. I tend to use tape and um, clips. I use both. Then just go ahead and line it up with the bottom here and at the top and just make everything make sure everything is kind of centered and sometimes your vinyl can stretch and mine's already moving around um, so just kind of place it how you need it to be and if it your vinyl stretched at all or even shrunk a little bit um, heat you applied when you're applying your dunk of you just need to kind of adjust your pieces okay so that'll be my spine put this aside for just a second and I'm gonna grab a couple of pieces here all right so these are your final pieces that you should have there's a business card slot I'm using clear vinyl for mine a side pocket and then two panels one of the panels has um, per the instructions there's a slit here at the top and you'll measure down um, as indicated in the pattern and you'll put two little holes here at the sides it does not have you this is what the back side looks like um, it does not have you do any type of stitching below or above that line I'm going to put some just in case I just don't want things to pull over time so I'm just going to do a line of stitching about an eighth of an inch below the 
below the opening here that I cut. I'm using just some sewer's aid so I don't have to change out my needle. And I am going to use, I'm not going to back stitch. I'm going to use about a four and a half millimeter stitch length. see it or not but it's about an eighth of an inch away from that that slit pull my threads to the back like I did on my appliques and tie them off I think I'm just gonna do it below I think that's enough I was just concerned about it um, stretching when you're kind of putting a, a pad in and out Okay, so we can set this aside. Okay, so now we have the final pieces. We have this large piece, a pocket, and your business card slot. We're going to put the large piece aside. We're going to deal with the business card slot and the pocket. And I know this is going to be difficult for you to see, but I'm basically going to center my business card slot down here. So the way that this is going to look when it's done is you'll be able to kind of just slide your card in here. So because it's clear, I am not going to use tape. I know, right? Miracle of miracles. Kim is not going to use tape for this. So I'm just going to try to line it up. I don't know, around here. And I'm just going to use clips. Just to hold it in place. When you're sewing clear vinyl, you may need to adjust your tension when you're sewing. I think mine should be okay. We're about to find out. I haven't sewn with these settings on clear vinyl, but I think I'm close to what I would have. Oh, I don't know. We'll find out. We are going to backstitch when we, um, at the beginning and end. So I'm going to start down here. I'm going to be using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so just snip your threads. Normally with um, projects, Similar to this, I would have not backstitched um, on a lot of my stitches. I would have just pulled the threads to the back side so that it was a little prettier on the front. But because you're going to be able to put things in the back of this, I wanted to backstitch. So here's what it looks like. Pretty, right? Okay, so now let's take our large panel. And I'm going to take off, I already put some tape on the back here. Out of my seam allowances, of course. And I'm going to try to line this up about three-eighths of an inch or so away from the edges. Somewhere like that. I'm kind of guesstimating. And I'm going to use sewer's aid again so I don't have to change up my needle. Okay. And because this is my favorite foot ever, I don't like Teflon feet. I can't see around them. So I prefer to use a metal um, narrow hinged zipper foot. And I sew on a Juki TL18 and I get my narrow hinge zipper foot from Juki Junkies. All right, so we're gonna start down here at the, the top kind of point of this right side of the pocket here we're going to sew straight down across and then back up to the other side so I don't know how well you can actually see those sides because I have pattern on pattern but I really wanted to use this vinyl it's the best 
and back stitch like we did before. Have ourselves a pocket. Fun, right? So this top part is left open and this side, long side is left open. You're stitching just along the long side on the left, the bottom and the short right side to make your pocket. Okay. So now that that part is done, I'm gonna put that aside for a moment. We're gonna bring back all of our pieces here. And this has tape on the back. Does this, this does not. I'm gonna put a little bit of tape on this too. Okay, so we're going to assemble. I'm gonna take my, I'll just do this left side first. So go ahead and take all your tape off or your paper backing of your tape off. And we're just going to align everything with the edges. There's a couple of things that I'm going to do that are a little different than the pattern. Well, really one thing that's different than the pattern. I got my stuff. There we go. Okay, so the first thing is we have to deal with the snap tab, right? So you're gonna lay your snap tab wrong side up. We need to figure out kind of where we want all of this. Let me actually just add a little bit of tape down the center. Remember, we, we already put the snap on the other side. This is just kind of a matter of lining it up. So here it is, right? And we just need to kind of, I'm gonna give it a little bit of extra like overhang here on the right. I don't even know how much that is, maybe half an inch. Not even that, maybe three eighths or so. Um, is kind of where I wanna place it. So if that's the case, I'm just kind of measuring here. I think I put too much tape then. Let me shorten this. And take your paper backing off. I kind of have an idea where I want it to go. So once again, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it here. I'm gonna line up my edges and just kind of move this around to where I want it. I try to keep it as straight as possible, maybe. Take your notebook this is about the thickness it will be when everything is in kind of do a little just check to see if like that's how you want it to stay closed I think so it probably could be a little bit tighter so I'm gonna move this in just a teeny bit There we go, that's better. I think that looks great. That's gonna be so cute. Okay, so now that we have it all aligned, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put a couple of clips here and here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stitch the tab 
tab down just on this side. I'm probably just gonna do a rectangle just to kind of keep it in place. Does not have to be anything fancy. You could use rivets too. I did not back stitch. You can, but I'm just gonna go ahead and pull my threads through on this side. Just so it looks okay on the back side. And I'll tie them off. Just check to make sure. So that's what it looks like. It's very subtle. You don't really see it. Just tie them off. Before I add my other side on, I am going to use just a small, I don't know, two inch piece of um, fold over elastic. And I'm going to use that as my pen loop. Here's a pen. Maybe around. Maybe around there. Again, I just like to eyeball things. I'm going to just lift this up and add it to my, my tape, just to kind of hold it in place. And then we'll grab our other panel. Take your tape off, or sorry, your backing of your tape off. Just again, like we did on the other side. Good. This is what it's going to look like. It's going to be so fun. Cute. Cute, cute. All right. So this is the last step. We are going to stitch. So we're going to stitch starting down here. So starting at the bottom right of your spine, you're going to stitch all the way to the left up all the way to the right, down, and back to where you started. From there, you're gonna head up to the top over the stitching you already did at the top here, back down, and then over the bottom stitching that you just did. I am going to um, probably back stitch by like a stitch length or so, just to secure everything together.
got some of my seam guide tape stuck. There we go. Need to replace it. Okay. So we are done. Let's put everything inside. Actually, let me wipe all this down because it's got. Let's wipe it down. So I've got some rosade everywhere. A junior legal pad. So that goes in there. That goes there. And then let's do our little pen through the pen loop. How adorable. How adorable. Right? Then you could put stuff in here too. And then when it's all closed, you have your snap. It's your spell book. How cute. I think this turned out so, so fun, right? It's so adorable. I don't think I can sell it. I think I'm going to have to keep it. I don't know. It's so cute. It's so cute. That's what it, it looks like when it's open. <laughs> so I hope you had fun with this one. I, I just love Jen, Jenny's patterns. Um, so again, this is the Moon Dance notepad holder from Sincerely Jen. Make sure you check out the links in my description to find out where you can find the pattern, where you can get the free downloads for all of the appliques for this, and also for links to the other sewists that are in the sewing marathon. I hope you enjoy, I hope you had a great time. Until next time, make sure you, uh, you subscribe though. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you get notified of when I have other videos. More are coming, I keep trying to release more. I do have another one coming up uh, soon here. So make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.